Hello, resin creators. My name is Katherine Swift, and I'm the Chief Creative Director at Resin Obsession. And today, I want to walk you through what is a resin's gel time. Now, you might be wondering why gel time is important. So the reason you need to keep track or know of a resin's gel time is in this situation if you're going to be adding layers to your resin project. So while you can let your resin completely cure and then add another layer of resin on top, when you look at your resin project from the side, you're gonna see a line between layers. What's nice about knowing a resin's gel time is if you apply a next layer of resin when the previous layer is in that gel phase, you're going to minimize that time between layers. So gel time is kind of hard to describe and it's kind of hard to know what to look for. So what I'm doing today is I'm gonna mix some resin and then show you what you need to look for to know when your resin is in its gel time. Now today I'm gonna to be using the Resin Obsession Super Clear Resin. It's a two-part resin. And so normally by itself, right, we've got resin, we've got hardener. By themselves, they don't do anything. But when you mix the two parts together, you've got a certain period of time known as your resin's pot time, open time, work time. But you've got a certain period of time that you've got to work with the resin before it's going to start to cure or enter that gel phase. Okay, so for the super clear resin, the pot time is about 20 to 25 minutes. And that pot time starts once you start mixing the two parts together. Okay, that's a pretty important point because what you don't want to have happen is, you know, you start mixing together and then, and then like you set a timer, then you mentally think, okay, I've got 20 minutes to use it. Well, unfortunately, once the two parts start mixing together, that pot time starts ticking. So I like to have a timer close by to remind me, you know, my pot time's coming to an end or to hurry up and use the resin. So once a resin's pot time has expired, hopefully you've got it put into your molds, you've done something with it, the gel time should occur shortly thereafter. There's several factors that go into when a resin hits a gel time. Obviously the warmer the resin, the sooner it's gonna hit the gel time. The more resin you mix, obviously the more heat you're gonna create, so the, the sooner you're gonna hit that gel time. And of course, gel times vary amongst resins. But what I wanna to do today is show you what to look for so that way, as you're using a particular resin, you can, you can have an idea of what, um, what the gel time might be and to kind of help guide you on putting that next layer of resin. So I'm going to mix the two parts today. I'm gonna to mix the minimum and I'm gonna set a timer. Generally, it's about 20 to 25 minutes. We'll check the cup periodically and then uh, hopefully we're gonna see some awesome resin gel time. So we're right at 25 minutes for the super clear resin and you can see that it's thick you know when um, I first got it mixed together it was much like water and now you can see that it's more like syrup I can feel my cup getting hot so I know the resin is starting to cure and this is at the point that if I um, were using this resin I'd be like oh gosh I need to get it in a mold because it's curing here in a few minutes so we'll check it again here in a few minutes, um, but we are super close to our gel time. So now we're at 30 minutes, and this is the start 
of the gel time. So you can see here how it's thick. It's still um, able to form back into shape. But at this point, this is the beginning of what I call the gel time. So if you, so you can see the more I stir this, I'm introducing bubbles. At this point, if this were to happen with your project, you wouldn't want to touch it because these bubbles, they're not going to rise to the surface, but you can see it's starting to get really, really thick. And this is the beginning of the gel time. So we'll check it again here in a few minutes so you can get an idea of what this progresses into. Okay, so now we're at 35 minutes since we um, mixed. And you can see the big glob of resin that I put here on the side has moved its way down the cup, but not completely. So if I put my stir stick into this, this is gel time. So you can see here it's like sticky taffy. It's still movable, but it's not liquid. So this is not going to go back into its nice flat shape. This is gel time. So if you had resin in a project and you wanted to apply another layer, this is the point where you would do that. Now, a couple of um, things you need to know when you um, apply the next layer, while you're gonna minimize time between layers, it's like pulling taffy, um, the heat is additive. So you need to be mindful about how much resin you're mixing and the fact that that heat, um, the heat from your first layer is also gonna combine with the heat of your second layer. So you, you need to um, be mindful of that so that your resin doesn't overheat and cure too quickly. But this is the point where you would add that second layer. So I'm gonna set this aside to cure. We'll check it again here in a couple of hours. And you can see that this um, very abstract form I've created is going to stay like it's funky abstract shape. And we will actually get to see that it's gonna cure in this weird formation. Okay, so what do you say we check on it again before we let it set aside to kind of give you an idea on how long gel time lasts and kind of give you an idea on um, you know how how quickly you need to work if you're gonna apply that second layer of resin. So we're at 40 minutes. So you remember 35 minutes, right? I created a big glob and it slid up the side. So most of it's still there, but some of it did slide down. So at this point, we're super sticky. It's not moving a whole lot. This is about the end of the gel time. So right, we're gonna <laughs> create a big old wave create a big old mess. So at this point you can even see like it's trying to create a mass and it's trying to pull out of the my resin cup. So you know certainly if you are trying to create you know layers without seams in your resin and you don't want to obviously disturb your layers because this would be horrible if you had your first layer and you go to check it and then all of a sudden it all comes back out. So the best advice I can give you in that case is to work with the resin a few times, try it out like this, and just start taking notes. The more you work with a particular formula of resin, the more you're gonna find out exactly how this resin behaves, especially if it's a project that you wanna create over and over and over again. Um, so obviously take some notes and all that. If you're unsure, what you do is, um, or the other thing you can do is mix up some resin, keep some in your cup. So like if I had poured a little bit of this into a mold, I can keep some in my cup, right? And I can keep coming back and checking the cup without disturbing everything in the mold and kind of know that, okay, we're about, we're about done here. So this is about the end <laughs> of the gel time because this is like a big sticky mess, right? I'm kind of making a big old mess here. Um, so the cup is getting super hot things are gonna start to solidify here over the next little bit. So let's check on it again here in a little bit and see what's going on. All right, so it's been right at two hours since I started mixing the resin and hardener together. So let's see what is going on here. So you can see our glob has stayed. Nothing um, went back into flat shape after we last um, <laughs> put the stir stick in it. Um, it's starting to cool. The cup isn't as warm as it was, you know, an hour and 15 minutes ago. You can see it's pretty solid. I can't even really um, do much with the cup. And if I take my stir stick, um, it's a little sticky on top. I can dent it a little bit, but there's no, there's no movement here. So at this point, this resin is going to cure the way that it looks, and that's going to take another few hours. 
So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope now you've got an idea of what gel time is and when to look for it and hopefully have an idea why knowing it is important as you're layering resin in your project. So if you need supplies for that resin project, we would love to help you. Head over to resinobsession.com and we can get you started. And if you need help choosing the right resin for your project, well, I'd love to be able to help you. So happy resin time, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe.